welcome to my very fancy grad student office. Most people probably film at home, but I'm a grad student, so the lab is my home. So this is where we're gonna be. I actually really love my lab. The people that I get to work with are amazing. There's plants all over the place. My mentor slash boss slash professor that I work with is so brilliant and so supportive of me. And my research that I work on is pretty cool. I'm discovering some really sweet things and that's what I wanna share with you today. One of the coolest things about genes is that they're basically the same across all organisms. Let's imagine for a second that all the living things on the planet are made up of blocks. If you've got a bunch of blocks of different sizes and colors and different shapes, you can put them together in new combinations to create shapes like flowers or puppies. The important part is that all organisms are using some of the same blocks. Doesn't matter if the block is in a flower or a puppy. If it's the same block, it's still going to act the exact same way. That means that what we understand about a block in one organism is still going to be the same in another organism. And that's basically genetics. Each block comes from a gene, and all living things come from the same pile of blocks. For example, plants all have the same blocks that let them get energy from the sun. And some bacteria have those blocks too, which means they can also get energy from the sun. I'm especially interested in understanding how things grow and develop. Many living things, like puppies, start off small and then have to develop into an adult. By putting blocks in certain ways, they can unlock what are basically specialized powers. For example, in a dog, if you put all the red blocks up top, that might be what helps the dog understand commands. But how do living things know where to put blocks or which powers to get? How do animals make sure that taste buds are on our tongue and not on our eyeballs? How do plants make sure that flowers grow on the stems instead of down underneath in the roots? The way living things do this is by controlling their blocks. For example, putting all the red ones up top or having just a certain number of yellow blocks. To control their blocks, living things can use what are basically specialized genes, basically specialized blocks. I'm gonna go ahead and just call these control blocks for now. And since blocks are the same across all living organisms, that means that control blocks are also the same across all living organisms. So if a control block in a dog says, put all the red blocks up top, that control block in another organism will still say, put all the red blocks up top. These control blocks are like the blueprints that living things use in order to grow. By not having proper control, there can be any number of issues leading to disorders or diseases or cancer as well. So it's really important that we understand how these control blocks work. I'm studying a control block in a plant. In plants, normally the tips of roots look like this. I'm studying a plant that's missing just one control block. And without this one control block, it's missing an entire layer on the root. Normally, there should be two layers in this place, but instead, there's just one mega layer that acts like both of those two layers combined. We don't really understand how this missing control block works in order to help the plant grow this layer, so that's where I come in. I'm trying to figure out how this control block works by basically building a new control block. We understand how some control blocks work, and since blocks are the same across all organisms, I can take control blocks that we do understand and put them together in new combinations. If one of these new combinations acts like the missing control block, then the plant will be able to grow that entire layer back and become whole again. So I'm discovering what these different combinations of control blocks do and how the plant's missing control block helps it to grow that entire layer. We need to understand how these control blocks work for a number of reasons. For example, some people are missing certain blocks and as a result, medicine doesn't work for them. Sometimes if control blocks aren't being properly controlled, they just don't shut off, and that can lead to things like cancer. There's any number of diseases and problems and issues that can happen if you're not having the proper control blocks. So it's really important that we understand how these work. By studying how control blocks affect the gene blocks in plants, I'm discovering more not just about the genetics of plants, but the genetics of every single living organism. And I think that's pretty neat. I hope that made sense to you. If it did, leave a comment, and if it didn't, please let me know. I'd love to figure out a better way of explaining this so everyone understands. I wanna give a huge shout out, Julia, from me, myself, and I. She made so many of these drawings that I used for this video. Thank you so, so much for those. Thanks for watching.